Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 278. We're in March. It's March 12th. We've been chatting about things, including CD-ROMs and how I don't have one, but Bob got drivers for his. Fortunately, he does have one. Uh, we're recording this meeting. For those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, we have a whole bunch of people in chat that we'd love to see. Bert, Jacob, Zach, Ron. I got that out in order. It's great to have all of you here. If you're new here, go ahead and say hi in chat. Uh, that's roll call. Let's talk about the agenda. Uh, hey, Wix 5 RC1 is available. We'll just chat about that a little bit. Yay. Um, and what that means. Uh, yay. Did I say yay? I said today was going to be a happy meeting. That's what makes it happy. And then we're going to do issues of triage. Uh, and actually issues of triage kind of makes it happy too. And then we'll do questions or comments, things that people want to talk about and stuff like that. So let's talk about Wix 5 uh, RC1 off the top of the bat. It came out Friday, March 8th, after many, many uh, efforts to get it finished. The out of proc bootstrap applications were much more challenging than I estimated. That's all my bad, sorry. Uh, but when completed and given the test, it felt very good. So feel pretty good about that. Also, people have tried using uh, Wix 5 RC1. Some accidentally by having Wix 4 upgrade to Wix 5, uh, their extensions automatically because they didn't have an upper limit or a version to prevent it. So it went into this. We've got probably an issue about that that we'll talk about. Um, and then someone else found a couple other bugs. So this is great. It's great to see people using it. That's what we want. Bring your code in. Try Wix 5. You shouldn't need to convert code. Should not be necessary. Um, unless you have a custom BA. If you have a custom BA, you have lots of stuff to do. And finishing the migration documentation is very high priority for me. Uh, mixed it with a couple other things that are very high priority for me right now. Um, so if you have a custom BA, yeah, you're gonna get stuck for a little bit. You can look at the other BAs that are in Wix as examples, uh, but I appreciate if you say, I need more data to be able to do this, totally. Um, but if you don't have a custom BA, Try your code out on Wix 5. We'd like to know, like, did we miss something that actually ended up needing a conversion? I don't think so, but if we did, it would be good for us to know because we tried really hard not to do that. Um, or if you hit any other bugs, which we're going to talk about a couple of them here in a moment, uh, we want to know about those too. So we could finish Wix 5. So let's talk about what finishing Wix 5 means. Um, Wix 5 RC1 came out on March 8th. That was last Friday. After kind of looking at the schedule and the symmetry of things, originally RC2 was going to come out on March 26th. We decided, hey, how about we just move that up to the Friday since uh, RC1 came out on Friday. So two weeks later, March 22nd, we'll roll out an RC2. Um, we will uh, see what kind of bugs uh, come in through that time period. That also gives us the 26th, the meeting on the 26th assuming we stay on track with meetings. So we'd release on that Friday of RC2, and then we could come back on the 26th and be like, so here's how RC2 is doing. Do we still feel good about our um, Wix 5 being done on April 5th, which would be two weeks after March 22nd? So this actually lines up pretty well for us to get um, RC2 out with a little bit of time for people to get some bugs into it and us for to fix them, all that kind of good stuff going around. Um, and then a, a well-timed meeting on the 26th to kind of review where we're at from here to there and say, hey, how do we feel about Wix 5 around the bend? So I feel uh, very good about the order of this schedule. And I do believe that uh, how well RC2 goes will be what we discuss on the 26th. And from that meeting, we will know how we're doing on V5. I still have high hopes. I, I, I have nothing but hope. I still have high hopes. Things still feel pretty good, look pretty good. So um, we're doing everything we can to get all of this all put together so that we can be done on April 5th, 2024 with Wix 5. So that's the plan. Not much has changed. We just kind of rejiggered things so that they're nice and kind of more uh, linear no, or pretty. I don't know. It lays out more like a better pattern every two weeks kind of thing. That's the way it worked out. Okay, so that's currently the Wix 5 release plan. Let's go jump into bugs and uh, see what kind of things have come in with Wix 5 and what kind of things uh, other people have found. So, Bob, you ready to go do trash? Okay. 
Okay, I guess I'll take okay. Um, all right, here we go. Push the right button here. All right. Starting at the top, which would be the oldest, 8018, error code 248 after upgrading to Wix 4. Okay. Doing stuff. Oh, this one where he sent big pictures of his something wrong with his MSI when he upgraded. Yeah. And this was just the white space got trimmed when it was in uh, and it's not at the moment. Oh, uh, we shouldn't trim that then, hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Who does that? But I guess you could do it in a define. Yeah, yeah, I can see that happen. All right, let's let's put this in RC2. Okay. Let's put I'll this in RC2. I'll take it if you don't want it. Uh, yeah, probably you. I have a long enough list of things. Should be pretty simple. Um, but yeah, good. The define is pres preserving the white space. Um, 8020, better burn related NuGet package names. This is a whip that I wrote up at the end of the out of process burn stuff that as I was doing all that work, essentially the out of proc burn, sorry, out of proc bootstrap applications um, work exposed lots of um, less than ideal developer experiences across the space is, I guess, probably with lots of bug fixes, lots of good things for Wix 4, but lots of not great pieces of the developer experience. So the goal here was to take a bunch of cryptic names that we had from Wix 4. And honestly, some of the names were cryptic from Wix 3. They weren't good names in Wix 3. And we didn't fix them in Wix 4. And given that we were already kind of blowing up all of the work around bootstrap applications and that we're going to, as we go forward, you're going to see, try very, very hard to minimize uh, breaking changes to be able to do additions to the language without completely blowing everything up. That's that's a goal. This felt like kind of last opportunity that if we're going to try to make good on a couple of these names, let's do that. So this whip is about making good on those names, um, taking cryptic things like B-E-X-T util and renaming it what it is, which is a bootstrapper extensions API. So if you want to write a bootstrapper extension, that's how you, you use that thing. I don't know that you ever would have guessed that from B-E-X-T util. Um, Obvious. Yeah. Similarly, you if you want to write a, uh, a native BA, you used ball util, <laughs> which was a better name for it before when it was a helper library, but it turned out to be the entire bootstrap application API in Wix 4, which I missed. Um, that made it not a good name for what it was. And then also we had mba.core, which is a terrible name. And that name has existed since Wix 3, and it was a terrible name in Wix 3, and I've disliked it for a long time. Um, so I did a little bit of experimentation and found a way to bring both of those together into one NuGet, which was very magical, um, and was able to rename it Bootstrap Application API. Uh, so that was great. Um, there's also Wix standard BA functions API if you have that. And then the last one is ball Wix extension, which again was supposed to be kind of like a wrapper around ball util, but it ended up containing all the bootstrapper applications that Wix provided, the Wix standard bootstrapper applications. So that was a terrible name for that. So that one got renamed Wix tool set up bootstrapper applications that Wix extension. So these names are hopefully much, much clearer. For backwards compatibility, ball Wix extension still ships. So people that are used to getting the bootstrapper applications from ball Wix extension, that continues to work. We we duplicated it in Wix 5. Um, it's kind of a waste, but it is. But it also meant that the namespace for for ball Wix extension, which is now the correct name is Wix tools at bootstrap applications, the Wix extension, a much better name. Unfortunately, the namespace is still BAL, which is how the extension got its name. So it, it, it's supposed to be bootstrap application layer, and that's where the utilities like come float. Anyway, these are all internal names that we really shouldn't expose like that and sat and thought about the names, but we just kind of picked them and someone ran with them. So we fixed them. There should be no breaking changes if you're using the standard bootstrap applications. You can use Wix ball. You can continue with Wix toolset ball, Wix extension but you should think about moving to Wix tools at Bootstrap application extension because, well, one, it's just a better name. And maybe eventually we'll get rid of ball Wix extension. I mean, we're going to try eventually. I don't know how we'll deprecate it, but um, we'll figure that out later. Um, it's not really a NuGet. I don't know. Maybe there's a way in NuGet to say, hey, use this one instead of this one, please. Um, 
Anyway, we'll see about that. So this is just a bunch of name changes for things that were already out there. Uh, the biggest change here is if you write a custom BA, you need to know about these new names. If you don't write a custom BA, then you don't even know, you might not even notice that there's available a better name for a ball Wix extension. Um, and that's the extent of it. The hope is here. Now we can roll forward with these and have nice, good names for the things as we uh, continue to do more work in backwards compatible changes in future versions of Wix. Ta-da, that's that. So this is done in RC1. I wanted to keep it here so we could just talk about it because it kind of is a thing I did at last part of the out of proc bootstrap applications. I was like, oh, this is so, so, so much better. All right, so that is 8020. Moving on to 8029, a whip. Uh, he wants to use a proprietary compression method for containers and his own compression and some sort of extension. Uh, bundle extension to support this. Yeah, so he sent a PR to try to do some of this stuff. I think we need to get a why here. I think we need to, this. the next question on this is why. I, I, I'd rather we just get a good co container and if we need to encryption and get those features in and rather than having managing an extension point for this kind of thing for lots of different containers. I mean, we've had cab forever. 7-zip would be better. Um, let's just, Start with why, because I'm not inclined to make this an extension point and manage an extension point for the complexity when we could just get a better container format, which is, I know, something that Bob's been talking about doing for quite a while. Yeah, I've been doing some research on it. Um, it might be the one of the things I work on in Wix 6, actually. Yeah. So it'd be great to um, get whatever things here that are yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, the, the biggest problem is that right now, Burn is very oriented around cabs. Uh, the whole container API in the burn engine is, you know, oriented around streams in a cab. And, you know, technically the format, the, the container API in the engine theoretically supports other formats, but only if they have or can emulate streams like cab files. And, you know, that's kind of not how a lot of the rest of the world works. So I would I would add, I agree we, the why is interesting. Um, I'm certainly interested in the encryption um, issue. Um, so it, yeah, that would be interesting to capture. Yep. Uh, anyway, these I'm, are things that- I'm not opposed to the API, but it needs a design as well. And that's, you know, I don't really want to maintain an extension point here. Like this is not an exciting place to put extensions. I'd rather we just get a good container format and call it good. I don't, I don't disagree. I just, the maintenance of this is just too much. Yep. All right. Um, 8033, Inkus experience between .NET tool install and Wix extension add. Those are not the same thing They're not. at all, but we can maybe learn some things from them. I will. Give that. Um, set up developer, want to do Wix toolset global, then Wix extension add. The solution was to pin the exact version, which is not good. Yeah, so you have to specify four. Um, add the ability to. 404. Not yeah, just. Oh, yeah, 404. Correct. I see four. Oh, this actually gives you 400? Zero, zero? I'm surprised that worked. All right, cool. That's <laughs> kind of cool that it worked. I, but nothing was done to make that work. I'm kind of glad it did. Um, the faults are interesting. So the idea of floating version there is interesting. Proposal, add the ability to avoid pre-release versions when installing extensions with XD. This proposal does not go with this user story. Well, I guess there is by omitting the pre-release. I can avoid installing pre-release. Okay. And then this. There's two requests here. Right. I think the proposal is missing one of those requests because I actually think the second one is even more interesting than the first one, although I think the first one's pretty good too. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, th I mean, they do kind of go together, right? Um, certainly the problem we have right now is we added five uh, NuGet packages and they are pre-release and incompatible with four. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, I, I, I agree we want the, at the very least we want major version pinning 
I don't know that we need to do the the full gamut of nougat style asterisk wild card versioning. Uh, that might be overkill, but yeah, uh, I think it'd be kind of cool if you know util that Wix X slash four pinned you to the major version. That would be kind of cool. And the zero and the four floated. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, yeah. the four dot zero is interesting as well. And then the last one floated. Yep. Because um, even then, you might not want four one, for example. Not that there's a four one planned, but if there was, you might not want it because it's a minor update um, yep. that might have changes in it that mess with your world. Um, so anyway, I, I generally agree with this. Uh, it can go for grabs, so we could do it. Um, if someone want to jump on it right away, it, depending on the change, we might be able to get an RC too. Unless Bob, you're going to jump on it. Um. No, I, I mean, I'm interested in the issue. Um, I think the floating versions might be a bigger change than we would want. Yeah, to I don't know. It, it, it's calling the NuGet API, so it's a matter of just getting into the NuGet API and finagling it to make it work. So, I mean, it, the code's all there. It's just somebody needs to go do the work, and I don't have the time to do this work, although I agree it would be a cool thing. So uh, let's put it up for grabs, and we can take triage off it and be like, yeah, this is be. Um, I agree with both of these features. Also, I think we should mention that the proposal should also call out the major version, um, floating, yeah. floating points, floating, floating version, whatever that's called, something like that. It's not pinning; it's floating. Right. Basically, it's marking of part pinning. of it floating. Pinning we can do. Huh? Pinning we can do. Yeah, you just and, put and the number in there. You're done. <laughs> also, to be clear, this only affects Wix.exe, right? MS Build already has. That's true. You get, integration that's true so that the wild cards there work not that's for true. The, the sdk yeah because that's special but the yeah. package references to yeah. extensions that's true we did we did get to build on the full power of ms build by reusing that payment bag unfortunately nuget yeah. didn't understand our stuff so we had to go from the command line had to provide a different option so yeah yeah there's also something in here of a version of wix knowing if the Wix extension supports it, kind of like the target frameworks inside um, managed code do, like you could say, hey, this target this targets .NET, you know, four or six, and if you're building for .NET six, NuGet knows that it can't connect those two for you. There's a cool feature in there too that's basically the same thing that we have between oh, there's an extension here that targets four. Therefore, this can be used for four, and then it just takes the to target five. It could be, I mean, essentially, a lot of that target framework stuff, which is above and beyond the pinning thing, just trying to make it easier so you can say, oh, does this actually support Wix 4? Kind of like what, you know, NuGet shows a new UI now to show you the framework versions that each thing supports. It'd be cool if they showed a UI that showed the, the, the Wix extension, the Wix versions that were supported by Wix extensions. I, I don't know how we'd get that change to them. <laughs> I'm sure anyway, we could go into the NuGet repo. and I looked at a little bit of this stuff, and there are options kind of in NuGet to get some of this supported, but not... They all have these weird side effects from what I saw. So, like, there's a whole opportunity to go dig deeper into all of this um, and try to build a bit better user experience around all this. But I do agree that this whip, if you also include the floating versions... Uh, is straightforward. It should be very straightforward to implement without all that target framework stuff I was just talking about. This should be very straightforward to implement and would have a lot of value. All right, that's cool. Um, 8036, Wix toolset, RC1 produces a Dutch, a Dutch, Dutch. a German, German, German MSI with in Canadian English setting, okay? So you do all these steps and you get a package with this language attribute set to 1033. That's... Which is E-N-U-S. Yeah, not German. You know, it isn't German. And it turns out that this is actually what happens. And Wait, so the, the MSI is actually in Dutch, but the language is set correctly? Product language is 1033, E-N-U-S. But the and UI is in the Dutch. Localization of <laughs> the controls that come from Wix UI is German. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. We got to fix this in RC2. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, I don't know what's wrong, but that's busted. It's, 
I, I did touch some stuff in that space, but that's pretty yeah, bad. We yeah, need a test yeah, for this. I'm like, not blaming you. It's oh, your I, fault, I, but I'm not blaming. <laughs> you. Hey, I, I, I take responsibility. Like, it's hard to write lots of, you know, to write features and not have something slip through. If you're, especially when we're missing a test, we should have a test that. Yeah, the, verifies exactly this. right. The problem here, it turns out, is is that we have. We have tests, I'm sure, that test the version, yeah, or the language. We have, we have tests that, that do this, right? So I'm like, huh, oh, this is clearly... <laughs> yeah, no, it turns out we're missing a test that calls from two extensions. Oh. That's the problem. Oh. Okay, cool. That's fine. We'll add a test. Yep. We'll fix it. RC2. Yep. Needs to be fixed at RC2. By the way, this is the kind of bug, honestly, in an RC1 of Wix 5 that I'm happy to see because it means that people took their very real code, ran Wix 5, hit something unexpected, not like they hit a bug, but it's a bug in a space that we did touch and it's not a bug in a random space that we didn't touch. And it's like, ah, okay, cool. People used it. They've probably found an issue in the place we got. We were missing a test for it. So we'll go out of test. We'll fix the bug and we're that much farther along down the road. So that's why this kind of bug makes me... Happy. That's the second best kind of test. Exactly. Or second best kind of bug. The yes. best, first best kind of bug, that's next. Yes. Oh, okay. 8040. Uh, files includes subfolders. Oh, I saw the picture of this. This this is actually, I'm glad that they wrote this for us. because But they did do screenshots. I think the screenshots say it all. Yes, I saw this. So... This is the input of the folders that files should get, and this is the output that you get in the results. Like, woo, that's so, cool. So what, I'm, I'm taking it that people don't want that? Yeah, no, come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, this is hilarious. Like, I can kind of see how this happens. It's like, woo, <laughs> that's funny. I'm amused. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, this uh, is the best kind of bug because it's in a completely new feature. Yeah, that's a completely new feature. And, well, and you're missing a test, clearly. Right. Well, not anymore. Oh, okay. All right. Bob's already on this. I know it. <laughs> RC two. Uh, we'll get this fixed and carry on, carry on. So again, great to see people trying the new features. This is exactly the kind of behavior you want. Hey, I saw this new feature. I tried it. It did a really strange thing. And we're like, oh yeah, that's busted. And they actually, I actually liked the way they responded to this too. They're like, um, it does this really strange thing. Does this support? I guess ah uh, the even support subfolders or do I need to specify subfolders separately? Yeah, so I don't like the even, but that might be a language thing too. Never know. So anyway, it's like yeah, good, good. Start with the discussion. Go. This is really strange. Is this really what's it? No, no. Let's get a bug on that. Woohoo! All right, we have a bug on that, and I think we're done. We're done. Um. So yeah. Easy. That's this is this is this is what I wanted to see in triage today. This is what we want to see in Wix five. This is where we're going. We're focusing on uh, getting all these things fixed, and the bugs have been um, pretty obvious right now. Uh, we have a whole bunch of testing and stuff going on at Fire Giant as well behind all this, plus a whole bunch of other things coming. Um, so nice and busy. Things, other things that people want to talk about. I've kind of laid out our expected schedule right now. Uh, the next meeting makes sense to be in two weeks, which is March 26. That will be right after RC2, so hopefully these bugs. And we'll go ahead and pick up any other RC1 bugs like as they happen. We're going to try to stay on them and get them. As you can tell, Bob's already been looking at them <laughs> as they've been coming in, which is awesome. Um, and we'll continue to knock these things out as we roll along. And be back in two weeks to essentially talk about, maybe we'll talk about all the closed bugs in RC2. That's probably what we'll do, right? A review of all the RC2 bugs that are closed and, in a, and a review of all the open issues at that point in time. And based on those two inputs, we will decide how we're doing for um, V5. Again, we haven't added a lot of features in V5 compared to Wix 4. So we're hoping that, yeah, these things just kind of slip through. We'll get tests, we'll cover them, and we'll roll forward with them. Um, that's kind of the plan. I've been filling gaps here to see if anybody had any questions, other things going on, stuff that we should consider. Um, anything else? Bob, you have anything? It's, I mean, it's pretty clear what we're doing. Writing tests. <laughs> writing tests and then fixing the bugs that those tests uh, expose. 
that were there. It's, you gotta lift up the log. I don't know, no, that doesn't work at all. Like, what does a test do? I guess it props up the log so you can see the bug. I don't know. Um, that kind of thing. All right. Chat is quiet. They're all like, this is cool. Everything's good. They're like, I already upgraded Wix 5. It was perfect. It passed all of my code, all my production code. Everything was great. I don't know that if that's true. Not. That would be great. Uh, would be great that happened. Um, if not, drop us a bug or a, or a discussion. Say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a bug. Please open it kind of things. Um, and we're going from there. Um, I think a half hour meeting feels about right for where we're at right now. Not a lot of stuff, but Wix 5 is coming and it looks so far pretty good. And nothing of this is particularly surprising. So with that, I think we're done. We'll be back in two weeks. We're going to do essentially this again and review uh, what we did in RC2. Look ahead at what we have uh, on our way to RTM and see if everything lines up in a way. Uh, if everything's going great, which I hope it is, uh, we'll have a nice big party on April and April 4th to April 5th to be like, woohoo, yay, we did it. All right. That's all I got. Uh, you guys take it easy. We'll be back in two weeks, same time, and we'll do all this again. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.